103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 30th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Whoa, I'm missing some teeth, but I'm still here. Let's go. <laughs> okay, and our guests today are Doubtfire. Uh, Dread Pirate Higgs Burr. and uh, George uh, Two and a Half Brooklyn. He'll be joining us here in a little bit. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Uh, one bet, what are we going? Uh, what's our topic today? So we're going to be talking about how to talk to an atheist in front of an audience. And I thought it'd be a good way to talk about rules of engagement when you bring an atheist onto your show to have a conversation. Because a lot of us have had interviews or have interviewed former atheists, and they were all really well done interviews. So I was thinking, how can we crystallize all of those rules of engagement in one friendly video so that the next time a pastor wants to have an atheist on the show, there's no surprises <laughs> and, 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 or, or missteppings uh, along the way. But before right. we get into it, uh, we do have our own Pastafarian uh, pa- pastor extraordinaire. Pastor <laughs> extraordinaire. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Dread Pirate, please lead us in with our weekly invocation. Absolutely. So this is uh, the Pastafarian prayer of knowledge. Hmm. Grant the flying spaghetti monster thy sauce, and in sauce noodles, and in noodles meatballs, and in meatballs knowledge, and from knowledge, knowledge of what is tasty, Hmm. and from knowledge of what is tasty, the love of spaghetti, and from spaghetti, the love of the flying spaghetti monster. Very, very good. I've always heard a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing for two reasons, right? (laughs) Hey, I want to do a quick review of how everyone's been doing over the last couple of weeks. It's been a while since we actually had a chance to meet up. I had some emergency dental work. And if anyone had been wondering what's going on, had a wisdom tooth came out, cracked another tooth at the bottom. And so they have to take out the wisdom tooth and the cracked tooth, but all good now. And I'm looking forward to getting a, uh, a fake tooth put in. I get to choose my own color. I think I'm going to go for silver. I want to go for like a piratey thing. Who knows? <laughs> hey, right. Uh, yeah, be yeah. Gold, yeah. Oh, is that how they do it? I thought, uh, okay. I thought that was the myth. We'll have to go to dread to, to sort that out. <laughs> dread. You are here. What is the, what is the appropriate pirate? Color I, I think it's you? gold. I think it's, it's gold. gold. It's gold. We're rocking gold. gold. Gold is more malleable, right? You know, so okay okay i thought you would want to sell the gold and just get the silver to chew on like that's that's you can make money off of gold that's, that's maybe the, maybe the gold is for the front teeth where you don't have to do a lot of chewing there you go yeah ah okay and people okay. see it okay cool dread how you been in the meanwhile how's the last two weeks been treating you how's your pursuit of chaos uh, well, yeah, I'm still working on it. I just wrote my latest letter uh, to ICBC. Um, he had claimed that the last time, remember I came and I showed you that little scarf there? Yeah. Um, so that's a permissible hair accessory. And, and anyway, he wrote back and said um, that I had gone in there claiming uh, accommodation under the religious policy which was not in fact the case. I just went in there wearing a hair accessory. Next time you got to record this as you walk in, like the second you walk in or something. Absolutely. Like that. And, and that's exactly right. Um, I've actually ordered a temporary tattoo with that same oh. symbol. <laughs> so I'm going to go in again with the scarf and if they say, no, nope, you can't have it. You I'm going to take you. it off and say, yep, eh, here I and am. I got a tattoo. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I love nothing it. you can do about it. What are you yeah. going to do? Are you saying I can't get a driver's license now because right. I've got a tattoo on it? Exactly. I love that you keep pushing it. I love that you keep pushing it. <laughs> so every experiment, Eric, you would agree on this, needs a control. And the control is a Christian cross on a headband or a Christian yes. tattoo. And if they yeah. get through and you don't. Yeah. I, I am trying to conscript uh, one of our fellow pastafarians to do just that. So if any of us were in Canada, we would be right there in line with you. That sounds like, I appreciate a, fun, that. That sounds like a fun weekend. Just like, yeah, I appreciate you want to almost get not arrested. Yeah. I love that. I'm, I'm totally yeah. for it. I also, uh, I also got my, my RPAS uh, license, which is 
remotely piloted aircraft system. Oh, so cool. I, mm. I am now licensed to fly drones in controlled airspace. Yeah, but those are big ones, aren't they? The big drones. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. cool. Very, very cool. Boudreaux, you know you got that ghost coming up behind you. What's going on yep. there? You're, you're, you're con a Japanese horror movie. <laughs> So my uh, my son had his tenth tenth birthday uh, this weekend, and my daughter set up a, a cardboard fort uh, complete with a mail slot for delivering mail and the uh, doors and <laughs> LEDs. I think it's so. Um, I haven't uh, broken it down yet. Don't have the heart to do it. So um, uh, have you spent his side any time in there yourself? Uh, I, I, I took the tour. That's all about it. So, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I've been, um, I've been playing, playing this thing. Can I point to it? Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same here. We've got a Same gig. Here. Is it? Is yeah. It we've a got a gig. We have a gig yeah. planned. Yeah. I've been playing the bass. We're, I'm okay. getting ready for a show we're going to do on Thursday. Uh, in person? First, like in outside? Person. What, yeah. What's going on? No, it's, it's a, it's a indoor place. That's, um, yeah, things have been really starting to relax here. It's nice. C CDC is saying fully vaccinated people can, you know, basically kind of carry on almost like normal. So, yeah. so playing live again, it's crazy. I don't know. So, so along with that, and not to put a downer on it, but I was, uh, I went to get a pizza yesterday and I was driving back home. I went past our local movie theater and I saw that it was completely shut down. And I was like, <laughs> yeah it's great to be able to go outside and and be outside and like get food and like feel feel secure in the fact that i'm out in public for for trivial things like pizza and i don't have a face mask but there's still the impact you know left and right sure, you know sure. going up and down mm -hmm. but i'm glad that like we are steadily getting back towards that normality you know so like i will i will give up movie theaters for that though i am sad that we don't have as many as before but it looks like you got your own personal one and i think that's <laughs> that'll be a testament of just like oh but it's not on a phone what are you talking about watching movies yeah. that's so bizarre mm -hmm. yeah good luck in your gig i know you don't need it but uh one last question have you been have you been meticulously practicing like nonstop now during COVID? Like, have you just been drilling on the bass scales and all that stuff or what? No, to be honest, without, uh, without having a gig on the books, I get pretty lazy. Mm. <laughs> you know, I did, the, I did those covers and di different things goofing around, but if I don't have, you know, if I don't have something on the calendar, like we're playing a gig, I'm sure I get pretty lazy. So, but I have been the last week I've been uh, memorizing, learning, practicing. Uh, so, so yeah, I I be, I, I'm better now, but yeah, I need, I need that thing on the calendar. Everybody needs goals. And when I work out, I don't say I'm working out. I say I'm training. If that helps for anything, it puts me in the right mindset. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree with that. Scott, I want to know everything about you in the last two weeks. How's your family oh, been? Wow. How's the music parade of, of mm. connected instruments going? Uh, oh, tell me about it, man. Oh man. So that's going well. Um, we're still recording more music, but also the, uh, second follow-up for, um, the Deborah Magone project mm. with the, uh, uh, Grammy writers right. and things like that. So we finished recording that. So it's all done. It's about to be released again on the same record label. And this one's more of a positive, uh, message, how to make the world a better place, encourage nice. people to, you know, be positive and treat each other. Well, you know, it's a real positive uplifting type of uh, dance song. Sure. So that's what that's all about. And also on another front, I've been building out, um, a new, um, exploring epistemology show. Um, so I had my first show yesterday, um, interviewing and doing a little SE chat with a former, atheist who just converted over to Islam and we all yeah. know who he is. And, um, yeah, so it went through some questions trying to figure out his process for why he converted over. And, um, so that was pretty interesting. So, yeah, I yeah, want to know all about busy, that. Man. And like, in like the next yeah. 10 minutes, I want to hear all about it. Who, for sure. who was that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, a guy was formerly known as Justin Downing. He, he was kind of up and coming. Uh, he had a, YouTube channel called empathetic atheist. And so he would talk to different theists and kind of challenge them and talk to them and, but in a nice cordial way. So his thing was a little different in the fact that it was not so uh, toxic in the, in the uh, conversation, but he, 
had Muslims that joined his uh, group and his uh, YouTube channel, and they eventually got to him and converted him over to wow. Islam. And so now he dumped the channel, and he's like 100% Muslim. He changed his name to Khalil Allah, <laughs> and he's like against atheism and debates atheists and tries to get them to see the light and stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, so I wanted to interview him and see what's going on with that. You know. Sir, did he give any kind of reason why he converted back to believing in God? It is so funny. If you watch the video, he gives absolutely no reasons. The only thing he says is that it just seems like Islam makes more sense than Christianity does. Now, like, uh, <laughs> now but he wasn't hold a on. Christian. <laughs> now, hold on a second. I feel like if you were to tell me, just because I know Christianity so well, I think it's more mm -hmm. of like a... You, you moved me from one ambiguous set of things that I know aren't true to another brand new ambiguous set of things that I haven't had yeah. a chance to investigate yet. And this seems a lot better because it makes more sense to me. And I'd be like, right. yeah, but when you start delving into that, it's this, it's just a layer and it's the exact same cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was it was kind of, one delusion I, for another. That's yeah. yeah. I had like, like a wait, this is strawberry cake too. <laughs> I had no idea he was going to say something like that. So, yeah. When he said that, like, there was like a million SC questions that came to mind. Like, which one do I go with? Oh, and the one that I decided to go with was, well, if something is internally consistent, if a worldview is internally consistent, 100%, does that mean, is, does that make it true? Yes. Does and he said, no. necessarily mean truth? No. Right. 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 I said, right. like, if Harry Potter is 100% you know, internally consistent. Does that right. mean Harry Potter books true? Right. And he's, he admitted, no, it doesn't. Though you so... got to, uh, <laughs> though in my I head, expecting it, that either. I was <laughs> I surprised he gave that. that as an answer though. I, I, right. there's so many minefields when it comes to stuff like that, that it's like, yep. it's, I love the fact that we're taking different approaches. I've been trying to simplify my SC approach, but we can talk more about that. I do want to get, I want to get to George, George Brown. How you well, been? I haven't um, seen you in the last couple of weeks. What's going on with you? <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember at all, but I want to comment about um, my experience with a Muslim. Okay. Because I, I always wanted to meet and know a Muslim. And uh, they're, they're kind of thin on the ground here in the United States. You know, they, my, my paths and Muslims' paths have just not crossed very much. Yeah, and, especially um, in East Tennessee. Well, not <laughs> even here. I, I mean, I'm talking about California right now. Oh, really? And um, so I was working on a, I was working for a dot com on a project and a, a manager there was a Muslim and we hit it off. We, we started forming a friendship and we started going out to eat lunch every day, d downtown San Francisco. And, um, we, he was very devout, you know, very religious guy. Now, I come from a Jewish background, and I've always been an atheist. I was raised an atheist, but I didn't just, like, throw that in his face. He, he was talking to me about how much he respected Jewish people. And um, this sounded very interesting. The, the fellow was from Lebanon you know, where they have a lot of strife going on for many, yeah. many years. And, yeah. and he's saying, I respect the Jewish religion. I respect Jewish people. I think, wow, this is really going to be interesting. I want to hear what he has to say. But um, it, it really boomerang. He, he, he said, I respect everybody if they're sufficiently religious. I don't care what their religion is. And again, I'm going, wow. If they're sufficiently I, religious, I don't care what their religion is. Yes, that is what he said, Ty. And, and um, George Brown I, with the new show topics. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and I was thinking, man, this is going to be one interesting guy to talk with. But then it came up. Um, about my own religious involvement. And he decided right. that I was not sufficiently religious. Yeah. That was the yeah. end of our friendship. He oh, wouldn't talk to me again. Oh, no. He well, had such an obscure standard, and yet 
He already let, oh, what a bizarre Yeah, so, so I, here is all these years later, and I'm still in the same position. I still want to, you know, and here I am in this uh, little town halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga, and yeah. I have seen some Muslim people walking around. So, hmm, what am I going to do? Uh, stay tuned. I, I yeah. don't know what the answer is yet. George, I have so many comments about that story, but I do want to get to Larry first, and then we can round out our how's everybody been doing section. Larry, how you been doing for the last two weeks? What's going on with you? Uh, doing fine. Um, just staying around the house. Um, I did do one uh, atheist table what? In, down, out in downtown Knoxville down in, the, right. they call it Crouch Park, K-R-U-T-C-H. And uh, I had like four people in two hours, one of wow. which was an atheist. And I said, wow, I didn't know you had a, had a group, had a table. I told them all about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Mm -hmm. But the other three people Great were, name for a group. Best group <laughs> name, period. Because it has yeah. Ask in the name. Yeah. It's such yeah. a great name. It has Atheist yeah. and it has Ask. And you're like, oh, yeah. this is perfect. That's the best thing. Yeah. Everyone should have it's, that. Oh. Especially for a group in Knoxville. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. But, uh, but the three other people were believers. We had a short chat. Uh, one of them was very short. Uh, he, uh, he told me he was a believer. I told him I wasn't, and that was about it. <laughs> 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 but uh, he didn't know what an atheist was, so I had to explain it to him. Actually, sure. I had to explain it to two people. Sure. But so been staying busy. Hey, did you get that motorcycle ride in that you were telling me about? I did. I nice. Did. Um, How was it? I've got, I've got a couple of them in over the last couple of weeks. I just... They were great. They, it was a little hot out there, but it's it's preternaturally hot uh, for this time of year. They're like eighty eight degrees in May, but yeah, but today it rebounded. It's like the Today's high great. 60, 68, 69. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful oh, day. I'm looking forward to yeah, it's gorgeous. It's running shining. outside. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Dread Pirate, go for it. Yeah, I just wanted everyone to say hi to Loma. He's watching our live stream right now. Hey, Loma. Hey, Loma. Hi, Loma. Hi, Loma. Hi, Loma. Hi, Loma. All right, yeah, so perfect. what we're going to deep dive first is we're going to get into Scott's topic because I think it melds well with the topic of the show. But I do have a hot take, and I want to hear everyone's opinion on this hot take. George's friend who wants everyone to be sufficiently religious so that he can be friends with them. I feel like that's a guy who's just looking for – Either a, I'm, a, just looking for someone who's not going to challenge his point of view. It's like, hey, we're all religious. It's not a big deal, you know. Like, and I can, I can assume I'm right. But as long as everyone's religious, it's easier for me to assume that everyone's slightly wrong, and I'm correct, than to have someone have the exact opposite opinion of me. Of like, I have no religion at all. I don't find any of it worthwhile to believe in because then i have to start asking myself some hard questions about why is this guy <clears throat> not fitting in my worldview and i don't want to change my worldview so i won't be friends with you or more nefarious here's the hot take he's looking to see if the booster pack of just how can i manipulate this guy into thinking like how i think because if he comes into me with this weird ambiguous set of morals i can tweak that so that he can start to be on my team and mm. i need someone who's just close enough to make my job easier. But if they have right. no work, then it's not worth being their friend because that's the path that I'm on. I'm trying to get people on my team. That's my quest mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. Hot take, Dret. Um, I, I did not get that sense from talking with him. We, we did have lunch for a few times. Um, I have to say it was a very exciting project. It was uh, a lot of people... <clears throat> You know, a new dot com that was b beginning to take off on the internet like a storm, and um, um, the the manager of the department I was in was Lebanese, and I have to say, in all the time I had been working in high tech, he was the absolute best boss I had ever worked for. Um, George. A, a yeah. Let, let me see if I can get some feedback from, from Boudreaux and we come right back to this. But Boudreaux, I want to know sufficiently religious. I'm okay if you're religious as long as you're sufficiently religious. What in the world do you think that means? Uh, you know, I, I had a different hot take on it, I suppose. And I'm, I'm not sure if this is more, uh, more aligned with how he was thinking, but you, you kind of, I, I, and I encounter a lot of the people at summit sometimes that, that, that take this kind of safe road of they're not really willing to say they don't believe in a God, but they really don't believe in any of the, the, the Bibles 
or, mm. you know, any of the scripture. So they're just spiritual, yeah, you know, and, and I feel like if you're spiritual, you're pr pretty much okay with every, every religion, right? It's, it's, it's a little more, um, a safer way to, and, and it's certainly a very, uh, liberal, uh, politically liberal, um, stance, you know, you're kind of politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. You're okay with, you know, a gay Christian or, a uh, you know, Islam or, or, or Buddhist or all everything. As long as we all believe in some kind of woo, <laughs> that, that, that's, that was my hot take. Dread, is that uh, what your take uh, is? Dread. Uh, Boudreaux, I, I, I just want to say that that is the sense that I had from talking with this person. Okay. That, you know, I won. Yeah. I won. What did I win? Hey, nice, nice. Dread. <laughs> Dread. What do you so, think? Well, I, it's almost like hedging your bet, right? Um, yeah. The way that uh, uh, Boudreaux is putting it. Um, and it, it it really does remind me of Pascal's wager in, in a sense, right? Is that, you know, rather than giving up belief completely, you're, you're just kind of hedging your bet that uh, you're, you have more to gain, um, uh, in being right than mm -hmm. if you choose the wrong thing and, and you go to hell. <laughs> so it's like pretending, trying as hard as you can to believe in something that um, you can't maybe put your finger on, but you're hedging a bet that if there is something out there, um, you'll find favor with it in the end. That's, that is also a good point. I love the different takes on sufficiently religious, as long as you're religious. Larry, what's your, what's your, what's your oh, word on this? It, it kind of gets me in the, uh, I hear this a lot, you know, uh, everybody believes in God their own way, you know, type of thing. Uh, everybody just follows their faith and it's all good. But when it comes right down to it, the other guy's going down. I mean, <laughs> when, but you, you never let, you never get down to that point with them. And you never actually ask them, am I going to hell? You know, yeah. or they never come, you know, come up to the point of saying it, but what do you do? I mean, right. it's not, right. it's not kumbaya at that point. Right. No. Right. No, there's only one ticket and only one winner. We're all, it's, right. it's, a, it's mm -hmm. a heavenly American idol and there's only going to be one or nobody. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Scott, I'd like to hear from you the idea of sufficiently religious as long as you're religious. What does that mean to you? You're on mute, my friend, because you're a clickety clackadin. Clickety and clackety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So to me, just that statement kind of tells me like the key word there is sufficiently. Yes. So what that kind of rings a bell with me, it, it says that this is a moral issue. Boom. Because you got my point. Because of, exactly. Because the thing about it is you could argue, well, there's all sorts of religious people that, that are bad people. Well, he's, he said, I didn't say just religious people. Right. I said sufficiently religious. Mm. So you see, he's kind of like setting it up there's already. A standard for religion that he's using. Well, so you can't just be religious. You have to be sufficient yeah. within my right. right. And, and, if, and, and if you're not sufficiently religious, you're not sufficiently moral. And, does, exactly. he, does he consider ISIS sufficiently religious? Exactly. Oh man, there you go. Yeah. minefields, dude. Yes, yep. George, what do you got? Um, you know, suddenly sometimes I feel like I, I suddenly don't know the meaning of a word, and I, I want somebody to define a moral to me because moral, I, uh, I blanked on it. Yeah, you know, just I will say know. just standards of how to treat people mm -hmm. in a in a social Bad. environment. So isn't that ethics? I mean. Ethics, well, ethics and sort of, morals are tied together. Yeah, ethics is the collection of the morals. So you have morals, which are the rules, morals, which is the system of applying the rules, and ethics, which is the combination of the rules together. So they're all branches on the same tree. It's just a question of how far up on the branch are you going. That's, I think you just defined that sufficiently well. I'm too addle brained. To, my to my point it. is very similar to Scott. I feel like he's making a moral judgment there. I think he's saying like, hey, I when I say sufficiently religious, I don't mean if you're, you know, like maybe he likes you if you're Jewish, Christian, or or more Muslim, but if you go outside of the Abrahamic gods and you say, well, I believe in Vishnu or Shiva, well, it's like, well, that's not sufficiently religious in yeah. my book because I don't know where your morals come from because it's not coming from the same, yeah. you know, base God. That's what it says exactly. to me. It's subjective. Yeah. And where are you getting that standard from? Though I do like, the, I have heard religious but not spiritual. I feel like that's sort of like a, an appeal to not offend. And I feel mm -hmm. like... 
I'm okay with anyone who's religious as long as we're sufficiently religious. There's an appeal to, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm okay if whatever God you believe in. I see the little bit in there. And I also see a little bit of the Pascal's wager of like, yeah, maybe you're the right. Maybe I'm right, but I know I'm right. That's the wager I took. But I do mm -hmm. feel like there's a moral assessment going on there. Yeah. Um, speaking of, and that's is why I think it's great because once you hit the idea of atheism, he was a hard out. And so like, how does a guy like that managed to actually have a conversation with an atheist and not actually bail out on it. You know, I, I didn't even say to him that I was an atheist. He found I, out? I, no, no, I, I, I concealed that because oh. um, uh, the thing was that, I mean, it was a very complex situation, really, because here I'm talking with a fellow from Lebanon who is an, you know, he's an Arab and he's... Um, He's he's a devout Muslim. He, he talked about his own marriage, that he had to wait until he found uh, a, a, a Muslim girl who was sufficiently religious to be his wife. Mm. And he was so happy to have met a, a woman like this. And um, uh, he he was defiant against Israel. You know, he 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 talked about having to live on his knees and he was. But George, the yeah. idea of like hiding you're an atheist, how did he find out that you're an atheist? You were saying that once he found out about your religious stance, he was gone. Now, what yeah. do you mean how did he find that? that out? How did he find out? And what did um, he find out? He, he got it by osmosis, I swear. He was, because I was not sufficiently enthusiastic. <laughs> it so, was in my, it was in my manner. It was in my in, demeanor. Was, in my head, I am now leaning towards more nefarious friend who's looking for a religious package to try to manipulate. Because yeah. all these conversations you're telling me about him, all these details you're explaining, he had to have told you that. And if he's not getting the same from you, it's almost as if he's selling it, the ideas to you and seeing what mm -hmm. sticks. And as soon as he found that nothing sticks, he's like, great, I'm going off to the next guy. Well, I, I, I didn't get that sense from him. True, no, true. I, but you're a nice guy, George. I say you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I got the, you were born an atheist. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was bathed in the flames of people trying to indoctrinate me. Mm -hmm. And I got the yeah. red flags, baby. My, my spider reflexes are really good on that. Um, yeah, and it was so. I was so discouraged. I was yeah. so disappointed we're, when we're this done happened. with that friend. Friends in the bad group. We're we're moving on. But there, I have a sister who's Muslim, and I told her I was an or, uh, she knew I was an atheist like from the get go, and we have lots of conversations. Really great, Larry. I think we're at the bottom of the yeah, half. We are. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how to talk to an atheist and going For into sure. Scott's story. Yeah. Okay. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on Wozo Radio. That's W-O-Z-O Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is May 30th, 2021. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, uh, which was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. ASK has over 1,000 members now, and we have weekly Zoom and in-person meetings. Uh, starting at, I think that started May 11, so they've had two of them now. Uh, we'll be meeting at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City out on the patio every Tuesday after work. So you can find us online in Facebook, meetup.com or knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. Um, also, if you're interested in the Rationalists of East Tennessee, that's R-E-T, just go to rationalist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Star! Uh, All right. Where do you want to pick up there, Wombat? Hey, I want to get into Scott's own interview with our man, Justin. I feel like we were looking for a reason for why he joined Islam. I know why. It's the sweet hat. 
because when I saw when I saw him doing the interview yeah. with his other Muslim friends, I was like, "Ooh, that's a cool hat." And the friends had the hat, and he had the hat, and they looked brand new, and they even had the sticker on the side. Yeah, we like, need we need cool hats. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Need, it, you're not a religion or a cult until you have a cool hat, and I think atheists just need the cool hat. That's that's yeah. really what yeah. we needed from the beginning, right? <laughs> but, Scott, how the interview go, and what were your rules? of engagement or at least thoughts in your head to make sure the conversation stayed respectful. Right, right, right. So um, what I did is before we even went live, um, we all met, you know, we met and we had a little discussion and I told him, you know, this is not a debate. I'm not here to throw gotcha questions at you. This is, and I asked him, are you familiar with street epistemology? Which of course he was, he, he, he's been a big figure in the atheist community, at least with some in some circles and so he was very familiar with anthony magna bosco and um you know different um street epistemologists and he used to practice it too back when he was an atheist i guess so he was familiar he knew it was going to be what it, what the rules were from the beginning he kind of understood all that going in so that was a good thing and you know and so Going from there, um, I just kind of wanted to set the interview up, you know, and be really cordial with them and give them props where it was due and just kind of help them relax. Because let me tell you, um, he's been having a lot of problems with different atheists in the community. Even Matt Dillahunty, him and Matt Dillahunty went at it um, about around surrounding his conversion. So he's just got this idea that, oh, I was so disillusioned. You know, I thought atheists were my, my friends and the community was going to hold me down. And But once I flip, now they're all attacking me and lying about me and all of this stuff. So I wanted to help let them know, at least here, you're not going to get that kind of treatment so we can talk, you sure. know, have a productive conversation. Sure, 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 sure. It sounds like... And I, I would say this again, um, one of my new year's resolutions for 2020 was to get off social media, including like YouTube and stuff, and just mm -hmm. deal with what I can handle in like a weekly or daily format without anyone telling me what to pay attention to. And it's done marvelous work in terms of my mental health. And I feel like when someone makes a transition, like from even Christian to atheist or atheist into Muslim, that's in my opinion, a very personal you know, transformation and to, to introduce that in on a, on a global stage with an audience where people are weighing in on a very vulnerable transition for you. I can imagine that being a very, very uh, traumatic experience where you don't know who your friends are and you make, you make yourself even more willing to, to bite down on whatever conclusion you jump to, regardless of how reasonably you, you went there. And so I feel like I'm seeing that in that transition, but Overall, you had a conversation with Justin. Uh, did it go well? Did it go badly? How, I mean, I don't really know the update on it. Okay. It went really well. Um, you know, basically, I was just asking some general questions, uh, going into his history a little bit. You know, he started, he was raised a Catholic, um, baptized when he was a teenager, um, then got out of it when he was around 16 years old. Um, then he went into, uh, I, I guess, a Methodist church is what it was. Hmm. And then he kind of got disillusioned with that. And then he sure. became a hard atheist, um, as he described himself. Um, well, I got so I just asked, yeah, go ahead. I, hard atheism I have a question about. But, Dred, you had a comment. What's going on? Well, it just, I mean, it just seems to me um, that he couldn't have truly been an atheist. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Well, the reason I say that is because it sounds like he was on the fence. He 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 wasn't jiving with Christianity, and that mm -hmm. uh, because of the huge difference, or you know, the big difference between uh, Islam and Christianity, sure. it's really a, a transition from one to the other with a sort of a void in between the two. So that's right. not truly atheism, maybe agnosticism. Dred, can I, can I weigh in on this? Cause I think this is sure. a good segue. Uh, Larry, please correct me on this, but in my opinion, an atheist is just someone who's not convinced of a God claim and you can be not convinced period for a period of time and then convince of another God. So like, yeah. as long as you're not convinced, that's an atheist in my book. What do you think, Larry? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I, that's why I particularly asked him uh, why he, what, what reason did he give for saying he left atheism for a God? Right. I mean, yeah. it comes right down to us. All of us atheists want a good reason. If yeah. there's a God out there, we want to know about it. Right. We want good reasons. We want evidence. We want something that's repeatable, testable. Right. Yep. What reason does he have? That's one of the reasons that anybody says I used to be an atheist. That's the first place I go. Yes. What convinced you that a God was real? Exactly. And rather and you, than just saying it was a nicer religion than the other one. Right. And you can be an atheist with very low standards of being convinced of something being true, which is probably what got him back onto the religious train. But in my head, you, if you aren't convinced that anything's true, I'm willing to give you the credence that you're an atheist. But I don't care if what you call yourself. I care if you have a high standard of truth. And right. if you have a high standard Evidence. of truth as a Christian, it tends to filter you out towards wherever I'm at. And if you have a high standard of truth as an atheist, it tends to filter you out to wherever I'm at. Because I have a high standard of truth, and I care what I believe is true. And I don't want to believe in false things. I, mean, I don't have the best standard, but I at least know that I don't know is the best answer until I, I have a good reason mm -hmm. to believe things. And I don't think Justin was on that page yet. And that's probably why. That's, nice that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 It's an unfortunate thing that can happen to atheists. That's why I'm saying Larry, a lot of, a lot of having a high standard of truth is having a high standard of evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, if you have a low standard of evidence, in other words, if <laughs> anecdotal stories meet your standard of ev evidence and you have a low standard of evidence and your, the Bible is made up of nothing but anecdotal stories. Right. It's all secondhand. And, and David Hume taught us a long time ago that we can't believe miracle train claims because people are more prone to lie than, than the laws of, of the universe are to change Even yes. for an instant. <laughs> hey, that's a greatly well-stated um, sentiment though. I Boudreau, love to hear you weigh in on this. Uh, the idea that atheists can are just as e an atheist with a low standard of truth is just as prone to self delusionment as someone who, you know, is fully religious and, and has a low standard of truth. And in my opinion, it's that, mm -hmm. it's that standard that needs to be increased first not the label right because you could be an atheist and have terrible i'm sorry if i'm talking over you Boudreau, what's your thoughts yeah. on what we're talking about <laughs> no no I, I actually track track most of that sorry i had a, some distractions in the background so i killed the video for a moment but was it the dog but, or the kids i must know was it the dog well, or, or the, the ghost the dog, the dog <laughs> <of one. laughs> um no no i i i totally agree with with what you're saying i think it sounds like that's what's at play here and maybe even a little bit of, uh, you know, hearing his history, uh, kind of leaving religion at, in a teenage year time frame. Yeah. Um, and that's rebellion. That's, you know, yep. there's, there are other, I, mm. you know, atheism is a cool, you know, rebel tag yeah. to, to go with. So yeah, it, it I, can be hip. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't catch from what, you know, little we know about his history. I didn't catch any sincerity mm. to his, his atheism. Although, being big in the street epistemology and I mean, is there, d does he have any um, recordings from back when he was an atheist? Oh, yeah. and, uh, he, he is so, um, I thought he was very artful and skilled at um, logical thinking. I actually learned a lot in some of the things he said, just by watching his channel and being a part of a lot of that stuff with him. So it came as a real big surprise because the same things he used to, um, criticize theists for, he's now practicing that. Like, yeah. you know, I asked him, like, one of the things that say, like, what's, what's a good reason to be a Christian? And, you know, let the Christian tell you, you know, hellfire or blah, or, uh, because it's, because it's true or because it, it, it'll make you a moral person, you know, and he would, he would point out how those are bad reasons to, to conclude that the thing is true. Right. So he understands all that. So when I asked him, I turned the question around on him. So why should an unbeliever become a Muslim? What's your, what's the best reason? And he says, um, well, it, because it makes sense. Again, it just makes sense. sense and, uh, yeah. and I never, I, I don't understand. I, I, I really, I don't know where to go with that, to be quite honest with you. I, I will let George weigh in on this. George, you're on mute, my friend. Uh, take yourself off. Um, it, uh, the, you know, what I'm hearing is that he's he has a fundamental need to believe. 
you know, it, it's, it's down to an emotional logic. And um, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, I, I, I think it's, I'm now talking philosophically myself, um, it, it's a very deep need that a lot of us have you know, to, to be part of something that is larger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just the, just the yeah. genetic fabric of trying to be a social creature more or less is what, what yes, is. yes, yes, indeed. And, and, um, you know, I don't want to go off on this, but, uh, we're afraid of death. We're afraid of our own death. Sure. And we're, we're afraid of the deaths of the people who, brought us into the, into existence and, and, um, or at least are meaningful to us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and so underlying a lot of, let's say beliefs are this, this, this fundamental belief that I'm, I'm talking about. And so there, there's the, the urge to believe I would like to believe, you know, I just can't. You know, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I'll, I'll go out. I'll, I'd like to weigh in on just one quick thing. I think there's a mm -hmm. fundamental need for attention here too. Uh, you have a guy who has a YouTube channel trying to get more subscribers, and when he transitions or is at least considering it, you have a group that's like was his original audience. That's like, no, what are you doing? That makes no sense. You're doing it badly. Like I'm telling you critically that this doesn't make sense. And then you have the other group that's like, we're gonna make a. Sh you're gonna be our poster boy for all the people who are gonna wear this hats. You're incredible. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. Awesome. You're great. And when you have that, you have the competition between a hard truth and a delicious lie and delicious lies when <laughs> nine out of 10 times, baby, it's why we are where we're at right now. It's like, it's how all marketing works. It makes you feel good and makes you like, Oh, I want to, I want that fancier car that does exactly nothing for me. Uh, Larry, what do you got? Yeah. Well, one thing, one thing I mentioned a little earlier was that uh, we have a have to have, we have this need for something larger than us built into us genetically. Uh, a lot of people believe that, and I think that's true because for most of our formative years, if not all of them, we had someone larger than us that we could depend on: our parents, yes. our yeah. father, our mother. Yep. As a matter of fact, if you look at the symbolism and the wording of a lot of the origin, the 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 religions of the world god is our father in yeah. heaven you know and the, and the and the catholic church is really about bad about that because they then make the priests your father and mm -hmm. the nuns your sisters and, and all of that and of course mother mary so I mean, no one I talks about that... mother mary everyone only cares about the father in fact i want to make that a show like why couldn't mary just be the the, the yeah, same well, I have to believe they do talk about that. Right, right, yeah, yeah, I want to know. I want to talk about that. I got, I got opinions, but yeah, I hear that's you. All that's, right. that's all I say. No, that's true. Okay. Uh, Scott, what, what's your way in? Yeah. I was just going to say everything you guys were saying are saying, um, have been charged le uh, or, um, hurled against him in, in his groups and in his, on his channel. And, um, all of the, probably, I'd say maybe 95% of the atheists that used to follow him are saying, oh, he's just doing this for attention. Wow. He's just trying to remarket himself, rebrand himself as something else. This has caused a lot of war because um, apparently Justin's been very angry about that um, accusation. So he's been really on the, he's been really on the tear about that and fighting that whole idea. So... Mm. Um, the other yeah. thing is that he says behind the scenes, he says, no, my reasons for becoming a, a, a Muslim is because of the Kalam cosmological argument and, that doesn't get you any. and, con and the hard problem of consciousness. Those Scott, two things, the Kalam cosmological so argument why, is <laughs> your Sam Harris. Just, just throwing yeah. this out. Because you mentioned that four out of five shows. I, we can go to that. And we've George, yeah. just, so you know, we've defined it on multiple instances. We know the problem with that argument. Larry, do you, right. do you want, do you the want to hit it again? Cosmological argument it again. just, just says it's going to be a God. There has to be a God. Right. I mean, right. he could have stayed in, in Catholic, Christianity. He could have gone back to Christianity. And at the end of the day, it's just other, an assertion. Yeah. It's just it's, an assertion. Yes, he, could, yeah. he could have been a, a deist at the end of the day. Right. You know, it's, I, on my interview, I asked him, how do you go from there? You know, let, let's say I, I, I told him, I said, okay, I grant you that everything that started to exist, let's just pretend like the universe started to exist. Okay. And that's a big how do you go from that? 
Right. And that's a big grant, right? That's a very big grant. Said, even if even if that was true, and I asked them, how do you go from that to Allah? And he never answered the question. It was okay. just a lot of dancing around. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. Anyway. It did sound like, remember, we were talking about the topic of the show is rules of engagement, how to show respect, how to get atheists on your show. It sounds like you had an agreed upon format of the questions that you would be asking and the tone that you would be asking them in before you even had the, the interview begin. And I think that's a good way to start a conversation with an atheist, especially if you have different face on the show, because no one wants to feel like they're being attacked and no one wants to feel like they're being immediately judged or part of an interrogation. And so when I had my interview with the, that Christian way back when, I had an black and white writing. This is what I want to talk about. Please don't preach at me. He did preach at me, but I mm -hmm. made sure in the interview, it was like, you told me you win it. And this is breaking those rules. And he's like, Oh, I'm upset. I'm like, that's not my problem. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> he's like, Oh, I'm going to end the interview. I was like, great. I'd love to leave too. And that was more or less the end of it. But I at least had that record. And I think managing and respecting those rules of engagement, very important. Boudreaux, it's nice to see George with you. Just wanted to give him a chance to say, hey, what's up before we head out. But uh, hey, Boudreaux, Boudreaux, tell me about your interview with John, if you, if you can summarize in a couple of minutes. Yeah, like, I think a, a big part of it was talking about how I got to where I am in atheism and, uh, you know, kind of that backstory, which I, I don't know. I think that's when you're talking about how to talk to an atheist. I think that's usually a good, a good opener, a good starting point. To, yeah, know you as a person. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you, you, we got George here who was, you know, um, not really indoctrinated with anything. And we've got we've got folks from all different, you know, uh, walks and, and different religions, different parts of the country. So I, I think that's a good kind of opener and you get to know the, the, the person's journey a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I do think it's important to to have them admit that everyone's born an atheist. And, you know, you, yes. do, you know, we're, we all were atheists. Uh, and then, you know, some stay or some back and forth. So, um, it, it was a neat conversation. Yeah. I love that you made that point. I actually have some people on YouTube who take these conversations that we have over zoom and cut them so that they can make arguments against me or street epistemology. Like there's a whole practice session that does like, let's look at the latest critical video on Thai and, and see how we can like crop it out. And it'll be like clips of me being from YouTube being like, yeah, eating babies is awesome. And that'll probably be its own clip later. But I do like the idea of making sure that people understand that we were born atheists. I think that is like the most crucial give possible because that is the case. You weren't born, you know, quoting scripture. You weren't born saying praise Jesus or whatever. You didn't have a God belief. And then someone down the road convinced you that a God was true. And then that's what you believed until you read, uh, in my opinion, which is atheism, George, um, I, I like I, I like that idea um, yeah. of eating babies. Uh, can I buy a ba can I get a baby sandwich at Subway? <laughs> a foot long baby sandwich. Anything of veal. Anything of veal. <laughs> Any other George? I uh, love to get your way in. Final thoughts before we uh, get ready to close the show. Well, I hate to waste the time Talk because I just jumped in here, but I, I would just say that I I, okay. I I recently heard an argument about a a new book that sounds really interesting. It's called Attention Marketing. And uh -huh. it talks about modern marketing, which I, I think religions have always been involved in attention marketing. But it's something you might just Google and see what you think. Mm. Fair enough. I like that. Other George, George Brown, is there anything that you would recommend that we check out before next week? No, no. Uh, baby, baby, baby sandwiches sound really good to me. I, baby I want sandwiches them. sound really yeah. good to you. Wonderful. Wonderful. The bon, the what if I soft. told you all all meat that you're eating is basically from babies, just non humans? That there's your, there's your crux. Oh. You can't wait for babies to grow up. It's the truth. Now we see the real reaction. That's what you have to see. You have to see. It does hurt a little bit. Dread. What do you got? Yes. What's what's coming up in the future? Well, uh, of course, uh, you can find my stuff here uh, on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate. Um, and thank you, Larry, for posting it on your web page there or your sure. Facebook page. Hopefully, I'm looking for 100 subscribers. I've got 88. So I've got 12 to go. So please sign up. Uh, that way I can mo uh, uh, change my or modify my channel. Um, and nice. uh, I'm reading a book right now from... Uh, Steven Pinker, it's called How the Mind Works. 
Mm. So it's been, I've, I've just gotten into it and it's really, really excellent. If anyone's ever read any of Steven Pinker's stuff, I would uh, uh, heavily recommend this book. So Wonderful. Wonderful. Scott, what's coming up in the horizon? All right. So the, the single is going to be dropping soon, but you can get a preview of Ooh. it. Go to dubshine.bandcamp.com. I uploaded it yesterday for everybody to check it out. Um, other than that, we're going to keep on working on the uh, Exploring Epistemology channel, hopefully every Friday um, for every other Friday. And I got a spot on there coming up soon. Yeah, right? that's right. You'll be on there next. So that's I'm looking nice. forward to that. And that's going to be on the Same. Borg Skeptic channel. So if you just search Borg Skeptic in YouTube, you'll, you'll pull it up and you'll see the channel uh, or the show Exploring Epistemology. We may have to do a session on just how to make a YouTube channel name. They got, mm-hmm. they got to be easy to say. They can't be mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's just board skeptic with 16 Ks. And you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, yeah. we'll get into it. You can find myself on Let's Chat. You're probably here now. Uh, the, Buffalo, uh, this, what do you got? Just to correct that, it's, it's attention merchandising. And it has very it's much to do with what you just said. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I deliberately picked Let's Chat to just keep it as simple and, and casual, as non-intimidating as possible, because that's what I'm all about. Larry, take us out. What's going on with you? I, well, there was I a have... few things that I were going to mention about how to talk to an atheist, uh, but we never did get... Well, I don't even know what atheism is all about, so why am I supposed <laughs> to figure that out? Uh, well, atheism, I mean, I have a book called Atheism, What's It All About? <laughs> it's available on Amazon. I got you. Uh, uh, wow. can, there it is. You can see it. That's the picture of my daughter, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, you never told yeah. me that. Yeah. First time yeah. I knew that. Okay. Yeah. My own content is on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog it button for main content. Our radio show archive, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject are found there. My YouTube channel is found by just searching for Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. Either one will get you there. If you have any questions for the show, send them to S. Ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. They help a lot of people. Uh, If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour for another Wednesday. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.